Hey everybody and welcome. This is Tavo D'Arcy, formerly known many decades ago when I first started out as TJ in parts of the nation. Anyway, we're here today because I'm thinking of the country, our American country, but I'm not thinking, I'm thinking that until the church, the churches, the ministries at the top of the churches, of many churches, the Christian ministry is all I mean exactly, unless they have their identity in the true Christ, not in their own ministry, not in their own leadership, not in their own look, and all these things, which I've noticed as the nation has progressed into prosperity, teaching, but prosperity in the before in the social society, that the church has gotten that, that ambitious spirit. And I think that, uh, I hate to say it like this, but there is scripture on more than one place that says, and reminds all of us, that pride, self-righteous pride, superior pride, all-knowing, got it made or gifted, whatever, talented and knowledgeable pride, education, our size, our look, our four no more. Pride goes before a fall. So we want to look at Psalm 138 in James about pride. Psalm 138 says, you know, that the when the word of the Lord goes to the king, when a king, it says all the kings, that means believers, black, white, brown, not believers, when a king, when a real, a real king, a head of something, literal nation, government, or, you know, they're micro kings of their call business, whatever. When the king, when these kings hear the word of the Lord, when these kings hear the word of the Lord, they will... They will laugh. They will even sing, it says, if you read Psalm 138. Why? Because it's a spirit that goes past knowledge, facts, pressure, family, ministry, and comes right into their spirit from God, the Most High God, that says, yeah, I've got it. Like a eureka, I've got it. And that's how I do, that's my call is to stir that up and to, you know, I get that's, that is the way you see me here every day or every time all these years. It's by Holy Spirit download. You know, just reveal. Do it today. Don't do it today. Talk there. Do that. All right. So we're trying to stir that up in the rank and file. But the issue is it's not about me. So much canned Christianity has been going on for so many people at the rank and file. Everybody's watched TV, you know, every age with celebrity and packaging. It's now like, oh yeah, it's her ministry. No, it is not. It is submitted sila for the Christian in the body of Christ, the ministry who's born again, who believes the Bible, all colors, who have ears to hear, spiritual ears. See, that's it. You can have ears to hear, but you can hear a lot of stuff, a lot of playtime, crap, playboy, all this stuff. But you can have a spiritual listening, discerning inner ear, which gives you information that you would not have known unless you knew it was really silently, calmly from the Lord. An inkling, a download, a revelation, and that kind of revelation will never have fear. See, false evidence appearing rear is feel it. You have to teach, and I do. There are three verses, which are the starter verses, to weed out the many voices. Apostle Paul talks about there are many voices in this world and each one has a each one has significance too much to get into so that's in Corinthians there's many voices mama your memory the cell phone you name it the media the talking head whatever your own imagination so you have to get past that to the Holy Spirit and hunger more for him not an it a him than you do for cash that is the the holy fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom in this. No one's perfect, no one's right, only Jesus. But then there are some things to help you get better and weed out all the stuff and teaching and your own, you know, the garbage and stuff. So it says in to all of us, the, in more than one places, Old and New Testament, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, supernatural wisdom, all right, creative wisdom, idea wisdom, all right. Then you look at Proverbs 2, 1 through 5, it says, 
when you cry out, when any person really wants more of the Lord, when you cry out for more of God's wisdom and his supernatural understanding, you know, in Proverbs 2, more than you do silver and gold, that is our secret. The identity is not in our money, cash, possessions, pride, whatever, race, beliefs, lifestyle, whatever it is. It's the Lord, you know. So Proverbs 2 is the starter place to test that out. It says when you cry out literally or by yourself or just mean it in your heart, you don't have to really cry out, Lord, I want you more. I want this, you, the wisdom, your wisdom more than I do silver or gold. And it will have challenges, believe me. Because the devil, you know, on this earth, you're going to have lots of challenges that try to block you, stop you, make you not want to pray, feel no good, all these things. All right. So the big, the... The starter head is who you're going to love. It's not about your the society, oh, our life, our style, our you know, our belief set. It is about who you're going to serve privately when nobody's there all right, in ministry. So your identity is going to not be in your race, your gender, your look or whatever, your money, your education, your music, your talent, your gift, your daddy. It's going to be God. But you're going to have to look at it little layers and understanding. So Proverbs says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you could have the opposite of no fear of the Lord, not no holy fear of the Lord. It's going to be the opposite, which is foolishness, which is in our nation. So Proverbs 2 is how you get it. You want it more than cash, you know, silver and gold. Then it will give it to you free. The wisdom of God is, first of all, free, but it's written how you can tell if it's a voice of the good shepherd or the gold or fear or the nightly news or pain, you know, complaining, you know, all that stuff. So I'm going to go out here because there are people coming in and let me go out here. So the beginning of the Lord is the fear, but there's scriptural foundations for you and me to all have all right, that are smart and protection. Let's see, where shall we go? All right, so we have it here. The next one would be, how do you discern if you hear something in your spirit? Weed out those voices. It would be James 3.17, which is a test verse for myself. John 16.13 and 2 Timothy 1.7. Okay, so it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. John 16.13 says, when the spirit of truth has come, he the personality of the Holy Spirit with the Bible and help, He will guide you into all truth. He will not talk about Himself. He'll talk about things to come. That is the root for hearing God. If you believe it, you have to have faith. It is the it is the um, root for spirit of prophecy, get word of the Lord, encouraging word of wisdom. All those things start with the spirit of truth, His spirit. All right. Next one is what I want to get to. When you're in the day-to-day -day life and you get this sort of feeling or a dream or you get information and counsel, you hear the news, the bad report, you better get ready. You know, it's going to be like this and all these prophets of thousands of different opinions. Who is true? you got to hear God. That's how I do it. You can hear other people, yeah, but then you got to test each spirit by the Bible, but also by James 3.17, how it affects you inside. All right, the spirit, it says the wisdom from above is going to be peace. It's going to be pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's pretty heavy. You can test people's character. You can test your own character and heart. You can test a sermon, a teaching, a persuasion, a belief. You know, the energy is one, is not it. It's the spiritual quality that represents light, the Most High. So it says any wisdom, any wisdom from above is going to be first pure. No secret agenda, not trying to hound you, not trying to have a moat play you, get money out of you. The wisdom that's truly from above is not going to use you. All right. Pure, peaceable, easily entreated, not stubborn, not foxy not you know trying to win at any cost 
It's a relationship. All these affect your relationships. If they're pure, they'll be like this. Even lead, you can study leaders. Leaders can study us. Whatever. Pure, peaceable, easily entreated. I tell you, hold that up to your ministry people, your fellowship, their relationships off the stage with their family, the patriarchs and the matriarchs, the dads and the moms, but the spouses, when you don't, when you don't want, when you want your own way, easily entreated, when you think your theology, you know more than me and I know more, you know, all that. James 3.17 is a criteria for cross-body unity, abiding in it, enduring in it, forgiving everybody, falling off the horse, and with God's help doing this, all right. James 3.17 says the wisdom, any wisdom that says it's got, you know, pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit. The fruits of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 23, 22 by Paul, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, meekness, and self-control, self-government. You have the ability with God's help to keep that accusation, hate speech violence, rage, talking back, talking back and getting your point. That See, that is a combination of what is not there right now in society. You need to train it. We can train all people, youth, ourselves, elders. All right. So if you look at what happens when people are snapping off at people, it's a combination of their losing their self-government, their will to lose it mostly. They don't care. And the other is, are they easily entreated? They're, it's a combination. You can just gauge all that's going on in that a lot. We want our way, you know, comp you know, no matter what. We need to get this out, Christian. We need to get this out as a focus of teaching African Americans, Asian Americans, Asians, Africans, Hispanics, Caucasian. Listen, we all need it. Moms and dads. Any wisdom that comes from above that's really God, pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, Paul, without partiality, that is a giant one right now, especially in, I hate to say it, mega country, a lot of mega country ministries. Not all, it's the doctrine. And so maybe certain kinds don't do it. So, you know, it could be at any level. It's a relationship thing. Pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit without partiality. That means you don't have a system where you are so impartial, so dehumanizing, so full of it, so toxic and so many oriented to keep it your system instead of God's ministry that you are now typecasting a respecter of person's spirit. So without partiality means you respect everybody. You're winsome. You're wholesome. You just think we're here to represent Christ, who is from the Middle East. He wasn't an autocrat. He wasn't a bureaucrat. <laughs> he wasn't a matriarch or a patriarch that had to be everybody, all the skill, you know, in your, all that stuff. He was a servant leader. You can balance all the teaching with Isaiah 55, 53, the suffering saint, the real need. He wasn't attractive even. He wasn't even good looking. He wasn't packaged. He wasn't pretty. So you can read a lot of portraits of Jesus or snapshots that he does manifest. He does want us to know as we move through our life, train and model. So is Isaiah 11, 2 and 3 about the prophet, about the apostle, the minister, filled with all of God's seven wonder-working power without ego, Isaiah 11, 2 and 3. So these are ways to test and try out the spirit or the people you want to fellowship with, have your authority, have your friends, say you're under if you're in that kind of thing so this is a move of god called that god has given revealed of how to do this without leaving your movement you know not attacking people but giving some information that could be very helpful in cross-body unity ours is cross-body unity book of ephesians for all colors and trying to say this is we're as a resource we're not out here to take you over to be over you in fact no 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 we are offering a collaborative point of view for body ministry, cross-body unity, and uh, not authoritarian, but we understand and respect them. But it's more like the, if you need this, take what you need, sila. Adopt it, adapt it, as God says, to what you feel you're hearing on your part. Big and mega, my, you know, starting out with only God and you, no, everybody's equal here. 
So this is not about self-seeking my ministry, my type, you know, my, I know more. No, no, that's the old, old traditional move, all right? So you can do that. You get to do it. Hey, you're free because you're not under me and I'm not over you, you know? But we, this is the kind we want people dependent on God, not, you know, and we want to bless you and honor you because you might know things I've never thought of. That's the other part. I can, I can receive from people. I like it. All right. So the issue, we don't want to damage people if we do notice some things that are off, like calling false prophets and making all these TMZ cash, the new prosperity movement, naming the fame in dollars for Demas type stuff. I would tone that down and say, don't attack your fellow Christian for money. It just shows something, you know, it just shows something. Is it easily entreated? Does it match the wisdom from on high? Is it about, what's the focus? Are you really on the focus? Are you just getting all these people viewing and bloodthirst like a shark to, you know, throwing out the clickbait, you know? Put your clickbait over the side. Let's see what you drum up. A lot more dollars, you know? Um, otherwise, let's see. So the wisdom from Om High, James 3.17, is a criteria for every type of listening. The word of the Lord, what you hear in impressions, your thoughts, repeated thoughts, mama's voice you know mama can trigger things or daddy or your authority all right so you got to hear pure peaceable easily entreated full of mercy and forgiveness without partiality no respecter of persons religious spirit dominating religion instead you respect everyone is equal and valuable why because they're made by the most high god whether they ever want jesus or not whether they ever your style your look your size you're whatever. Everyone is a human first over here and a whatever they are and want to be second. So I have been given, you know, the call like a Paul. This is like, it is akin to a Paul servant leader, which is cross body Paul was in Galatians 1, 1 and 2. Not sent out intentionally by any one person, any one group. I and the brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and leaders and humans out here with me, collaborating, getting along, trying to cooperate and do what God wants for his plan, whether they're elevated more than me or not, it doesn't matter. It's the Lord many years ago, maybe the 80s on in Virginia. I don't know where that teaching is gone, but back then I was involved more in local regional ministry at my office and all the traditional home and everything, family. So I was invited to go to pastors that would go repent, suburban, urban, meet in different churches, black and white, and they would be speaking in tongues or not, just the area Christian pastors. And I was invited because I had my own ministry. So we'd go and repent for revival, for unity, get over racism, all this religious stuff, and God really wants that. But then new moves come in and the old moves, you know, things happen. It wasn't LP. That was, you know, things. But you can tell I learned a lot from good, healthy role models, black and white, back in that day. But I've always had that on me to be multicultural. I really have. The issue is nobody has to be a screaming, fighting, liberal, conservative. Nobody has to be a religious beat your Bible. Down. No, we are not for. I really think we are the two moves that I would reprove, I am reproving, seem to have the big boss of authority in them. LP, Levitical Patriarch, Levitical Matriarch, which have been my buck, this the, against unity, but it's for their revelation only. No community knowledge or teaching of Paul. You know this. So I have pulled out of, I don't want, this is not this is for our country. This is not religious right because, hey, for, I'm not always right. I'm trying hard not to be religious and I'm not always right. I got it. So you got to have zealous, respect people to trust God more. God is with them over there, wherever they are. They could hear him. He can go to them. They can have him. You do your part. You toss out the tennis ball of your opinion and your teaching, which I'm doing, and it's a sila. And then you can say, I'm going to let trust God, I'm going to hit it out there and in a loving, respectful tone. 
And then if they have an ear to hear, God graces them and grants them wisdom and they want to receive it and act on it or not or weed it out. That's their choice, not dogma. So this is it, Solicit, submitted sila to the body of Christ. Because of all the religion stone throwing in my mind alone since I grew up with... See, my daddy wouldn't like that. My daddy was a pastor, an office pastor, educated pastor. White, but he wasn't... He was at one state or another. He voted as the Lord led him through the Bible. He was not racist. He's very, you know, servant leader, not famous, not flamethrower, not Levitical patriarch, not we are the world. We demand to be under, you know, you're over and under all that. Nobody. I never heard of that. He was Southern Baptist. That's what I feel. Thank God God allowed me that, to have a background, you know. So everyone is different because my father and parents who are Christian pastors and they're in their extended family or quality, really quality educated people and loving Christians, none of them ever said a bad, an accusing word to any race or each other or me or, you know, against any kind of faith. So by God's grace, nobody could have gotten that, you know, so I would know a difference. So I could tell a difference in Caucasians that do it that do it and don't. So I can tell it. And then I went to my graduate studies. I got a couple, three degrees, postgraduate degrees in Dallas for 15 years. In hindsight, now I can tell why. <laughs> I got my, now I had a, I'll tell you my life history. I went to college as a Christian, Jesus person, said, Lord, I want you to um, guide me and tell me what you want me to do. I can't figure it out. Just you know, I'll follow you every day. So I did, and that's how this is turned about. And I met all these people and fathered my children, all these things, through the years. Revelation, hanging out, and the Bible, and good advice, and, you know, being cheery and everything. The issue is that then I had gone to school, which was then very, to me, coming from Virginia Beach in Norfolk, cosmopolitan, very, cool, you know, hip back then, progressive. I went to a little school, God sent me, and it was back then Baptist and more, you know, traditional. Well, I go, and I'm like this, this weird, I didn't know myself like then. I was this weird creator, you know, in hindsight, but also on fire for the Lord, but not a tame tame bookish kind, you know. And so I ended up enjoying my life. I had given my heart to the Lord, but I just didn't, I, I was bored. I didn't know what, you know, so I was a religious me, a religion major. Because I tried me, I was going to do music. I had this, um, I had this great music teacher in Norfolk who had graduated from Juilliard and, you know, she had been back then she was mentored by Rachmaninoff or somebody like that and she thought tell me you need to be a music major and she had me play but I was timid a lot more and I'm still not a performer I'm a I'm a worship leader uh, get into the spirit courting more and I could do both and taught for decades but so I made it my I had more fun because I didn't want to go back then I didn't want to be deceived and lose my faith because it was very liberal in the religion department so I got out with a barely 2.8 because I was like, get me out. But I, the people were really nice and kind. But I'm saying that I didn't know myself back then, and I got out with barely a 2.8 average. So when I became a Christian, all my, I had roommates who went on and got their double doctorates. All that. So nothing bothers me because I'm not into that, I really am. But when the Lord led me, he said Tavo, because my mom, dad died, and mom wanted to go to Bible college, and sister did up in Oral Roberts area, and Rama, all that turf, which is new to me, from Norfolk to there, and I was in Virginia. And I said, Lord, do you want me to go to college? Because it was starting to be my ministry. I had my own ministry getting, you know, toward that area. And the Lord said, no, I'm going to do not go to Bible college. Do not go to seminary, even though all these people were. All right. He said a verse. You will have, and this is what I've done. God, give God to only God. You will have no man, that, no need that any man shall teach you, but the Holy Spirit will be your teacher, and that is it. And I see many people. I can liken it to <laughs> being homeschooled by the Holy Spirit in a way. And yet, you have great. You have TV ministry. You have your own private time. You had a da daddy who had his 
his degree, you know, his PhD type, and mom had her education. So we had a lot of nest of noble Bereans, you know, in my hard drive. Billy Graham on up. So it was that, and then later in Dallas, that's what I'm getting to, after I was deported, sent to Dallas for my term in the region as a discerner prophet, sent to the area as an apostle. Oh, a seer. You pick up the realm, it was like, oh my stars, I'd never seen Big Boss at a return. I'd never seen charismatic plate. I've never seen ambition. I've never seen a lot of things, which back in the East Coast is so different, really. I'm so grateful not, you know, to be here. So I started studying my heart. Is it me? Is it what's going on in the deep where all the famous millions are, you know, people? And I thought, all right, let's just study the doctrine and the people and the fruit. And that's all I've done. As a result, I got to know a difference between play, you know, systems. I'd never been in systems and elite. I'd never been in occult and typecasting. I'd never been in a lot of things that were not organic. I called it I wouldn't know if I call it superficial at some places, I called it hail fellow well met systems. I'm not against the people, but I believe that it is a it is an anathema to the name of Jesus Christ. It is not safe for the atypical non and the lone woman. It is not safe for races. It is not safe because they are in partiality. And that brought me to this teaching that is so refined you know, refined. Because I thought, therefore the grace of God go I, but wow, this is not, is it really matching? Are we all, let's ask ourselves, are we organic? Are we fooling ourselves? Organic means no human synthetic additives, no identity apart from Christ. It's not our money and our showbiz right? or our follower. And I forgive them. I have to work on my myself all the time. So I said, is it? to test drive any kind of ministry, is it going to be a cash flow issue on their part or a love issue of Jesus, you know, pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit without partiality, no respecter of persons, respect for every kind, color, race, persuasion, no matter what they look like, no matter, instead of giving them the evil eye, because they're not our type, regarding the fortress, our money, really it. With that being said, the last one is without hypocrisy. Who wants to go where they've advertised using Jesus' name, Christ's name, to get people there, to drive all the way over in the heat and the gas and the, to a conference or a ministry or a church, to take their time, get their children in the car, go through the wear and tear after they've worked hard, been through hell in life, had many people, and you go alone or not alone, and mostly I'm teaching alone. Black or white, brown, right? You show up thinking, oh, I want to, you know, go and follow the, hear the Lord and meet people and fellowship and submit to Hebrews 10.25, not forsake fellowshipping the saint. And what you find is dysfunction. It turns out, and this is where we get this and need to say it, it's the, it's instead of the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> It's the fruit of the friendly for our fellowship from such turn away. In two verses, Paul writes, mentors, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, lovers of themselves. Hey, they're immune. Hey, they're, they're not the bride. They're more the superior pride. They've arrived. Oh, my star. Are they a cult? Yeah, it's our turf, you know. So the, the issue is the other one is 1 Timothy First Timothy 6, 5. Paul says, if they measure you by your money, and you're not blessed because they you don't have money like them get out so we did but we got it down now to teach it and help you train it also to so we can defrag it that's what we're doing this is not deconstruction I don't even know about that just see that we're not what is the other one cessations that's usually evangelicals that believe you know all that not our business this is defragging defragging doctrine of accusation false teaching occult and also big shot you know try not to just be yourself big or small shot be yourself lady or not man or what whatever so we're trying to say who right now who is true and who is false who's organic to the new testament not the law 
which tribe, which pastor, which mother, which father, what is the real, who is and where is the real Christian and the real church, churches. In cross-body unity, we don't believe one size fits all because it's not in the New Testament. They said house-to-house -house churches were fine, being led by the Spirit to whatever kind of dwelling, be it a famous or non-famous church or dwelling or house church or backyard church, you are led by the Spirit personally to be part of some fellowship that fits your peace, you know, James 3.17 that is not controlling, not, you know, too conservative, too liberal, whatever. You hear God, but it's not about your politics. We're trying to say, let's quit the politics and hear Jesus and make that Jesus Middle Eastern. And we're, my, my packaging, my presentation of, I've, it's like, I've always thought purple state, mid-wing, fly, you vote issues, not personalities. You vote issues, not one party. You be led by the Spirit in the Bible, and then whatever He says, vote it. That's my, you know, that's how I believe it. Don't mix up Jesus with money and politics. Making money off of Jesus. See, if you're saying I'm going to advertise Jesus, I'm going to advertise the white Jesus and get people in. I'm going to have them wrapped in the American flag, mom and apple pie. You will ask, you will turn off the African Americans. A lot of them. You will turn off every Democrat, every liberal, because they're going to think. And I've met people. I, I just got to tone this down. It's still early. But I think I really literally in Dallas met gay, gay community people. That when I said, I, you know, we were chatting. And I'm pro people. God has made them. And I love to hear their passionate, on fire, not lukewarm, well thought out stuff. And they hear mine. And we're fine. I can get along. I have fun. You know, a lot of fun. But I made the... At one point, I you know you test the waters. I said, well, you know, I'm born. I used the word born again or something like that, just to see what would happen. And it was they, they it was a trigger. And I'm going to tell you this because I like I respect gay people. Nothing. Hey, hey, you're human. I'm human. You know, just because you're gay or not gay doesn't mean you endorse me or I and you or condone me. But that's how society should be anyway. So I made the comment, you know, about born, born again or something, seeing what would happen. And it was like a trigger. And he said, it was like, if we go to church and get saved and meet Jesus, we're going to have to be turned automatically to a red state Republican. That was probably between, before the last election, after the first, you know, 16. So I knew, I thought, I see that though. I've had a lot of God sent humans who happen to have a gay gender issue you know what i mean hey they're human so i i know that whoever has got that who's ever had maybe has been assaulted been horrible things i don't want to hurt them again by being some religious zealot or bible you know, i don't believe you got to hear everyone's backstory at one point i had an a gay community person who applied who's kin to the royal family really in te in texas and I advertised for a transcriber for the ministry, and I thought it was a female, so we met to interview at the local coffee shop, and he shows up, a very portly fellow in his 50s who had a Hawaiian shirt. So I said, well, you know, I'm going to, I don't mind. He's not in the ministry with me. He is earning money, and I'm needing that done, transcribing. So I said, you know, I'm going to be giving, I'm going to be teaching Christian thing. I'm Christian. What is your, you know, will that bother you? Are you Christian? He said, well, I used to be. And long story short, he said, I, I used to be, and I said, well, tell me why, because I'm always interesting, interested. He said, I lived up north, and my, I went to a Catholic school when I was younger, and when I was 14, the priest started to rape me. And that happened all high school. Well, then he told the father, his own father, who was a big, wealthy person up in a northern state, very northern state, and he said when he told his father, the great donor to all the Catholic Church, the father started to do it too. See, you don't know what people to go through. So then he goes to um, California and he lives in San Francisco back then, has a partner and he bakes for the hospices, AIDS and all that. So he comes to us, you know, in, in Texas, where he's, he said they, he was very huge, large person, and his 
you know, physical state. And so he would have people write tracks, leave him tracks, and they took his money and many things that were, you know, showing one person they had built their dream house because they had love. The couple, the gay couple, had come to Texas, Dallas area, to help take care of the partner's elderly parents, and they were building their dream home nearby. And I met him because of that. God allowed it. So when they told me his story, he said, well, when they were building their dream house with their money, the Christian, born-again Christian female contractor took their money, and they, could, they had all this stuff, and she said, well, I'll pray for you. That, that is exactly what I, that kind of Dallas funk dysfunction is exactly what I had meant to, you know. So I will not throw any kind of self-righteous rocks at you because, you know, this is not, should not be a deal. You should have respect for the office of the human. So all the teaching about anti-bias, equal opportunity, real respect for the office of the human, and, a, and not being religious right, superior, but to be, I, the front, the new mantra here for all colors hey they're humans first they're whatever they want to be or whatever their color their gender is next and you treat the office of the human with respect across the board and they will read you see these people are gifted that person was highly very gifted all these people are out here are very smart college educated even if they don't go to college it doesn't matter because the internet is the new thing everybody's got a PhD every kid <laughs> so you have to be careful because what does it say love there in the last days knowledge will increase well that's one scripture important scripture but it also says knowledge builds knowledge puffs up makes us proud in Bible teaching and thinking and life all right skill, proven ministry, proven leader, you know, all this stuff is building up to the, all this. Knowledge puffs up. God's love builds up. So I say back off. Everyone in our nation, back down from all this highfalutin, all-knowing LP, LM preaching or any other kind, faith people and charismatic and evangelicals and black people and white people and brown people. Let's just forget about all this crap, excuse me, all this theology and do Jesus. <laughs> all right? Do Jesus and have community. If you're teaching skill, prophecy, our style and our way, and you're totalitarian, you are really anti-Christ. You're anti-Christ. You're in division because you're not teaching balanced theology, Ephesians 4, I am. And I'm not a celebrity. Listen, I believe that, I'll be honest, patricianism, aristocracy, bowing and scraping and highfalutin has brought down our nation. In, in, a, in the church, the true church has gone, who are you going to serve? Roman patricianism, what is the old Shakespearean quote? Well, you know, render under, let's see, what is it? There are a couple of them in the Bible too. Render under Caesar the things that are under Caesar, render under God the things that are God. Well, you're going to render under Caesar the natural, but you're going to render under God your heart, your time, your faith, your appointment, your, your respect for all people. The other issue I found in the cosmopolitan and uncosmopolitan, in the same doctrinal fruit that produces Big Shot, you know, LP, not LBGT, no, 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 I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the Christian. The Levitical patriarch matriarch subculture is the most backbiting undermining and never confronting you to respect the most uncontrite subgroup of ministry I have ever been even even me they are the reason I teach all this basically and try to deliver them before it's too late for them and our nation uh, you can have streams of it that speak in tongues and use occult that was the worst learning curve I had. And I got to declare it because I love Holy Spirit. They're, you know, undermining the way, you know, owning, slave owning. All right, then we, and you have to determine if that is one. They're all not like that, but there are a lot that are. 
Then you have the religious right. It looks like I'm not. I was raised around born again people who are not flamethrowers, but I know basic sound doctrine of Billy Graham and denominational. But the field I'm sent to is music and you know prophetic ministry, apostolic theology. So you deal with what you got on the field, and this is what I never wanted to know. So if you have people online, I'll go after the religious right, which appear to be white patriarchs again, most of them, no matriarchs, and to, to rankle for approving and exhortation, stir it up, to rankle the tribe. I've been writing at the God's leading. I said, you know, if you're going to put an anti-tongue talker, anti-charismatic, famous person when you don't even know them or their doctor, you're not in their circle, how do you really know? And you're not God, and I'm not God, you're not God either. How do you know who's true and who's false? I would examine, I've written on TavoLeader.com, you can write, you know, TavoLeader.com. I've written seven between April 7th, 2023 and May the 24th. I may write some more. I've got a lot more since. I've written seven articles about the TMZ style attack Christian who's doing it for, because they want money. And I've called it Demas for Dollars. I've called it um, the New Prosperity Movement, making money off of that. Bashing prosperity teachers, making money off of the Demas for Dollars, naming and defaming. Demas for Dollars, getting those monetized videos by the mega thousands. Tons, it's a genre now. You can see all ages, all TikTok, all shorts, all media, all YouTube. Man, you can't even... If you hit that scroll somehow and it starts bringing up all this complaining, it's just complaining, murmuring, murdering people that you don't even know their doctrine. I've had so much <laughs> frustration in the fact that I've been, I have was sent to study. I know more. Not I know more. These people have never been around. I'm not a charismatic, but I was in that, and I've studied it for 40 years, 50 years. And I can tell you a difference that the people they've named... It's really a it's really a travesty, a hoot though. They had somebody which I'll turn on once once in a while. I'll probably write a little comment, you know. Do you have you ever talked to them and confront them first? Are you into cross body unity? All this stuff. Ephesians four, uh, build, building unity. Do you know your real Bible? So they have these things like everybody that they want to get money from. They know if they put their face, their name, their ministry, and make it like TMZ, tabloid, National Enquirer, it'll stir people up to get there. And they use the same clickbait. And it's usually, like I've said, the same famous, wealthy Christians, high visibility, that are easy target, that have written books, speaking engagements, have giant houses or not. So, I will say, there's it's not my business. I've never walked in their shoes. It's not my peer. I would not have the Bible authority to much less publicly accuse them. Rebuke an elder. I mean, there's so many theologians. So I said, the other day, the other day they had listed people. I've seen Pastor David Jeremiah up there, Billy Graham, James Robertson, being fault, you know, accusation of demonic accusation, just demonic. Pray for this, because it's turning more people harder toward the Christian in general, all of us. It's confusing youth, and it's making money, and it is oddly weird and funny, but it's like, people, that, you know, America, maybe it's just another demonic ploy to bring America down, you don't know. So then you look and you think, well, who are the people they're calling prosperity teachers? That's the issue. Use the red flag, bring them in, make your money by being a red state, usually I think, I don't know. Make your money by putting up the famous, quote, prosperity teacher when you're really sneaky. This group is sneakier. They're making money off their monetized videos, getting famous, speaking engagements, funding themselves, bashing prosperity teachers. So I call these the new. You are the new. Some of you are the new prosperity movement. we got to watch you. And we're going to see if you're true or false. But I'm not going to put, I, I told them, I said it, I'm not putting your name, your face on a monetized video to do that to you. I don't. I think that's beneath dignity, really beneath. So they had, I'm clearing up, I'm going to, 
I wrote an article. I listed the ones that they're bashing as prosperity teachers. This new prosperity, the Demas for Dollars, naming and defaming move. You know, childlike move. Could be, what, 60 on down. I don't know. So I thought, all right, who is prosperity movement? If you're going to say, you know, I'm going to teach that because I honor the fathers. I was there before it hit that stage. And when it was core doctrine, I'll go to that. I still like that. It helped me live with joy. So I respect people. I confront their doctrine and doctrines. So when we look down the list, they have the same old, they have the same ones. They use and call them all over and 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 over. And And they say they're all prosperity teachers. Well, for your record, everybody Christian, a prosperity teaching, if it's now called that, started and is at its core, trace it down to word of faith somewhere. Or Roberts, Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Hoagland. I'm going to go back to Kenneth Hagin if I teach from... Because if you look at that person in his life, he's dead. He he didn't have scandal. He didn't have giant possessions. Airport. He didn't do a lot of stuff. Right. So I, even though the people that take his message have. That's the difference. You've got to know wisdom. So when I looked the other day and I wrote, I thought, these people are not officially prosperity teachers. They don't do it because I know their doctrine from way, you know. I'm not a blind sheep following that crowd. So they had Bill, they had Bill Johnson and Bethel. See, if they're anti, no, he is his own independent God move, Jesus culture, Bethel. It's their business. I'm not under them. And they are not word of faith. They are not teaching like that. They're very careful. All right. Well, Bill Johnson is not a prosperity teacher. He looks like it because he's got a lot of airtime. You know, a lot of fame. You know, people are really being, God has used him, is using him. Then they said, who is a prosperity teacher? Oh, yeah. Prosperity teacher is Hillsong. I won't go into that. I know Hillsong. I've never felt drawn to Hillsong. Why? Because they were assembly of God. They were against word of faith. They made it big and their music is okay. I don't know all their stuff. I never really felt drawn to Hillsong ministry. I'm not against them. But I know their people had scandal now and it's being milked for billions right now with Netflix and new scandal tabloids. That to me speaks more. Banning, you know, get money, a profit off like vultures. So I don't go there. I'm not accusing them because, listen, they're for the grace of God. Go I or you. But I'm saying their music is fine and you test everyone differently. The third one was um, there is that one. There is Hillsong, which is Assembly of God. There's Stephen Furtick, which is Elevation, which is not. They're Baptist. They, he has proven he is quality, has giant, you know, he, God is using him. And is, I know that, I don't know him, but the fruit where I have visited and go there, well, the Lord is working on my land presence here. Hey, I know charismatic, he is not. I know cult spirit, it is not. I know monetizing and playtime, it is not. I'm sorry, and they're more diverse. I'm not, I don't know his book, I don't know him personally, I don't, but I know he's written a lot of books and speaks a lot. It, let God get, let God choose to trouble me and see if I'm in competition like you are. Let God trouble me with sidetracks, not knowing true hearts, and focus on the fluff. You know, the. it's just so, it's so, the, the way these, these tattletale ministries that go after celebrities use them to make money by doing that. That's just revulsion. All right. The last one was, there was another one that was um, always out there being bashed. Oh, T.D. Jakes. Now, T.D. Jakes, I'm not going to assume anything, but I was am concerned about the Hollywood in the last few years, you know, the Hollywood stuff. It's, you know, up in there. Other than that, I have followed him since I was on the East Coast when he really, and I went to the Potter's house more than once out in Dallas. It was not a cult. It was a, it was not a, it was diverse and loving and warm and had a holy fear of the Lord more than any other except for a Baptist in that area. So I didn't, he was, he was Pentecostal, fluent in the spirit. I think the people that are against the, uh, they call them prosperity teachers, the new prosperity teachers, 
go against people who are in the Holy Spirit. And that is a big deal right there because they could really get them, you know, God forbid that they get themselves curses for failing to discern the body of Christ correctly. There are two curses in that or touching God's anointing. And we don't want to touch you because I'm not naming your name. All right. So fluff. So we, we pulled away. We're looking for, that's why I like the barista fellowship, Starbucks level, coffee shop, gym, normal people. That's me. That's how I'm raised. All right. So you look at, you can go for it, discerning who is who and who is real by your own heart. God and the Bible. That's why I do it. I can be wrong, but I'm doing my best. This is what I did. Oh, I didn't tell you. How I got my three DFW PhDs. So I am officially doctor. In 2004, I wrote a, even though I had my BA, God allowed me, I'd seen that I'd be connected to Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, and God allowed me to have an encounter with a, and write the theology, the, the music worship curriculum for a college, multicultural college in Alabama at the time, and it was the natural side of real music, because I'm a real musician, I like theory and composition, but then the Bible side, so I gave them the curriculum, and I got a 2004, a Ph.D. honorarium, you know, honor, no money, just that. So I now I'm officially one of those kind of doctors. <laughs> so then I went to Dallas where I really got three earned degrees. And this is what I got down there in the big boyism dysfunction and merchandising misogynist realm of whatever that warfare. I had never, you know, good gyms. Hey, I like Dallas. I like, I like the area, but... Something in the bath waters, the doctrinal bath waters were not holy. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I got three degrees in hindsight. PhD, 15 years. Pretty hard days. PhD two, piled high and deep. And the last one, I got my DFW degree. Dallas finest and its worst. <laughs> So this is why we're here, but we're here. To, we live, you know, we live to talk about it, and a lot of it has been because of good teaching prior to that and during that, using YouTube online, you know. After, that. but let me go back. One of the reasons I am here in one piece and joyful and feeling and smiling is many reasons. One is my daddy and mama, that were quality Christians and ministers. Certain other ministers in real life that I knew that were more spirit-filled, you know, tongue talkers, that Holy Spirit, and then ones on TV, certain ones, that I would feel led and impressed for seasons to listen from. And then I watched some of you and some of you, and then certain groups I did was led in the 90s to learn worship and impartation and the fear, you know, certain ones that were living the life. I did see false doctrine in the 90s in certain places. That's when I started to get under the witch-watching understanding that it's out there. But I also saw that those groups have really got, I, I just said, gotten false since then. Some of these have gotten false. They were not false. They just had some false threat, you know, false things once in a while. But now these people are false because they've gotten really witchcraft, occult, and it's an everyday cult thing it is really off and it's sad it's wrong it's wrong and it if you go to witchcraft in the spirit of prophecy men and women and you are now never speaking never relate and you start to bore into them and scan their soul their mind their spirit and their their love life very deeply disturbing very prurient, very toxic, very defiling, very disrespectful and objectifying. See, it's dehumanism. You know more. It's your right to know every, you know, to, and also as a, a white female, I'm not red state. These are red state, big boss. So when I started in the 90s, to notice that spirit when my daddy was not like that. No man in my life in my board at boards, no people black or white had done this until it got into these studying the LP, turn out LP type of charismatic, you know, bless their heart. When I started to get racially profiled in as sent out to conferences 
from the state of Virginia, I would see myself triggering that demon, you know, and I went, what is it? What do I do? I show up. Well, God, that was God. He wanted me to learn it, to just study it, and to decide, is it true or false? Is it witchcraft or whatever? Then I saw it also when I got my PhDs in the Deep Southwest also. So what I've done was I racially profiled it back. I thought, I trigger it. It's like a black person would feel or anybody that would be racially profiled, targeted for showing up. And I identify that to help how black people and people feel women alone, people alone, atypical, maybe you're overweight, underweight, whatever it is, earrings or not. I, that is a trigger. It's a spirit. It is not blessed. It is attacking and warring to war, whatever that is, demonic in the churches of the disease. So I thought, because I'm no slouch, hey, you know, God, I'm a prophet, and I know I'm on that turf. I'm being sent to know something. That's it. So when it started to first racially profile me, I profiled it back after a while. I thought, this is horrible. All I do, I'm, I'm a mom. I'm a pastor. I'm a minister. I'm a proven, I've been around Virginia, R Richmond. Nobody's done this to me like that. Only the well, turned out in hindsight, the well group. So here's how I got my Western European Levitical Patriarch Matriarch theology. I read them back, and I thought, all right, I walk in, black churches, Baptist churches, charismatic churches like Vineyard, their soft-spoken servant leader, but I never have, nobody does this. And I've been in pastor's gatherings, shaking their hands, said, thank you for the service, word of faith. Nobody did that. Nobody. All right. I go up there to say hello and thank you, and that's what triggered it. That's all. And so I got this giant defragging of accusation and theology teaching from my many years of, ex you know, with this. Just trying to fellowship. <laughs> when the lost. Alright? So I would go in, and if that prayer, that spirit was present, present, I must be its deliverer, have a deliverance ministry, because it would manifest when I walk in. That's all. Sit there. Walk in. Women have it. They do it. Right now it's deep scanning, it is trying to read you, it's like the Salem Witch Trial, all that stuff. So I've taught and taught well to keep on teaching. But I was raised formally, I was raised traditionally, and I can hang with traditional, non-traditional, and I can be all kinds. But I'm not into divining, disturbing, disrespect, and defiling of, of another office they're so... If they can't tell the difference between a prophet and an Elijah, which, which is like myself, and they call it a Jezebel and a demon and a witch, this one group, charismatic group, they are on the warning list by the Lord. They are failing to discern the body of Christ correctly. I cannot tell you how big this is. In Tampa, in Florida, in the Panhandle, in Dallas, you know, Virginia, uh, wherever this doctrine is, and if I will say it is always white, always in the white. Line upon line, precept upon precept, my call, back in the day when I first started with the public ministry in 1986, I'd been in ministry all my life, I'd had a, you know, servant leader without a title type ministry before then. So in 1986, the Lord gave me a revelation of the encouraging word and a prayer minute, you know, pray protection for pastors, writing a newsletter, and I did Bible teaching, so I got it. Nothing was going on like that. It was not showbiz. It was much more soft-spoken. Also, the area were respectful. So when I look back, I can see the difference between when all this highfalutin packaging ministry, showbiz, playtime, Demas, accumulation, no love, no fear of the Lord began. And I remember being there from the time of, of Billy Graham on, Jesus' people, but then when the first TV ministry scandals happened and the first charismatic magazine started to advertise conferences and the pressure was on at the local people, the grassroots, red state, white state, no state, all right, black and white, to look like the famous preacher, you know, the charismatic, if you're in charismatic word of faith or... Assembly of God or CIRs, you know, all these ones, prophetic, nameless ones. 
a lot of people got their call and got their they got their call and they got their modeling for what a ministry is and is not only from there and I did not I came from classic traditional educated patriarchal on my mother's side but not my daddy he was servant leader so I have only by God's mercy survived this long journey and only by God's grace and miracle walked it out and know this by his it's a miracle it really is a miracle so we teach apostolic foundational ministry lowercase a apostle to all kinds of tribes whatever needs to hear it is a resource this is apostolic core ministry and I lost a lot of time due in being present and more public and everything due to domestic violence and then DFW, you know, dysfunction in Christian ministry. It is a spiritual realm. Also, I didn't know witchcraft. I didn't know the whole, I knew the Holy Spirit, but not like I had to know him. I didn't know I'd have to be this tough to stay, to be with this kind of crowd that's out there now, the package crowd. And we're not offended. See, this is it. I know your vocabulary. She's offended. We don't have to listen. It's only a woman. I mean, then pop psychology. Oh my gosh, pop psychology. I've never, I haven't even seen that up here. Well, I did in the same kind of group. The pop psychology diagnosing people is just similar in the in you know, the same kind of crowd. So all this stuff has been a giant bunch of paraphernalia to have to figure out, weed out. God's given me grace to be able to speak about it and strength to forgive him and also to keep on going because this is, must be giant deliverance that the devil does not want me to stop. He has not wanted me to make this clear. It has been like the enemy has been on my case out in this field of the Holy Spirit. When my heart is pure, they could talk to me. They could have, you know, I could have helped them out. They could have, helped, you know, just been friends. So I don't have the right connections right now. I don't want to play time. I don't want good old boyism. I don't want to be read and scanned by the seers, gone crazy about themselves. I do not want to go out and big boss. So that is why I prefer to go where they're not dysfunction, not charismatic. And charismatic, I believe, is the call. You can have, you can have all colors of charismatic, but if you look at charismatic, there are three kinds. There are three kinds of charismatic because you don't want to make stereotypes and accuse them. They're people. They're people. Forgive them. Forgive us all, Father. We know not what we do, but we got to address it in the right tone and manner with respect. After pulling back, after seeing what did I, you know, as the Lord led me to revivals and Brownsville and Toronto Blessing and Ruth Heflin as well as natural people and the Camp Grant, all these people and ones I won't name now because some of these have gotten off, but Dallas all around, you know, Word of Faith, everything. You know, knowing the basic group, speaking as well, you know, prophet, looking and researching. So now I realize that they're basically, the red flag is to say, if they, if they are really spirit-filled, are they going to have the false teaching of occult? So there are three kinds of basic charismatic tongue talkers. They could be white, black, or brown, but the ones I met were white, my own race. And... Therefore, the grace of God go I. So the pro, the racial profile back was red state, colonial, we are the world, we centric colonial, we are used to ruling over all. Our turf, the totalitarian turf protectors, uh, Levitical patriarch, if you look at the tribe of Levi, before he got redeemed, when he was younger, he had a murderous misogynist spirit. I'll teach that one day. I need to do it in Genesis. The founder, you know, the father of the, the tribe. Uh, I have not sat still and done nothing on this. It's been a depleting, let me say this, and it's taken God's strength and energy to do this. All right, it goes from the Salem witch trials, the witch watching whelp up there in New England, same kind of people that, that use spectral evidence to spy witches and read them without, you know, demeaning, demonic, comes up from, <clears throat> comes up from Florida where they have the shepherding movement started, which is part of this, maybe not as a cult, maybe it is now, but it was back in the day when they had New One magazine that I found out about it. It comes from mainly, I would say, the people have flown through the following two with an occasional three. 
And when I say these names, I'm going to mention the names of the movements where I see the most of this all the time, where it traffics in this. Witch watching and occult, never speaking, territorial. But really the occult is, and the red flag is, is that witch watching and accusing innocent people, putting them on the witch list, reading you, defiling visitors. Back, it just I've never seen anything like it. So that I'm saying I'm going to tell you the names so you can study, make sure you're, you know, don't accuse them. Assess them by James 3.17 and their fruit. But then I do not know the top people. And I, I, I would say I'm not accusing you because I'm not up in your headquarters. That's how I do it. But I'm going to say your people are trading off your name. That's what I will say. So the top would be Christian International, the most. The most. LP, the most the people who are under the most, the most, a call, the most, jumping you in public, the most. Under, I've never seen anything like it. If there's in that doctrine, be careful. I'm not saying all of them, but that's where witch watching is the zenith, in my opinion. All right. Other than that, hey, I don't see anything. I'm not talking about the top guy. I know. I don't know him. I don't know them. I see. The people who operate under them saying they're part of them. All right. I'd say C. Peter Wagner, his doctrine is tied in because he was, uh, well, he's dead now. And he wrote some doctrine about their apostles in the gates of the city that are over everybody. And that's where this, I believe, really got a big hand, big deal on this for all these people that are under that. Not mad at them, just not, but just concerned. Next would be Assembly of God, not all. Some of the Assembly of God's where I started ministry. They're the nicest people. It's the craggier ones that are maybe the old patriarchs still in the movement. I don't know. I don't. I've just run into them where they look. You know, you're Jezebel. They won't speak. Some fa a lot of famous people have gone through there, and unfamous seem to be not all accused people, especially word of faith from their pulpit, and then they have the deer in the headlights misogyny. And some of it is occult and not. But usually, Assembly of God is so plain. There's nothing like that. But you do, every time I notice for a long time, that a lot of them come from that LP, LP, Levitical Patriarchism. All right. Though I'm not saying all of them do. Then we got a few, maybe a lot now. I haven't been around that had wanted to be Word of Faith. People at the top, like I was out sent to Kenneth Copeland's ministry for many years, you know, to check it out, know the people under them. I'm not, I don't, not complain about him. He's, he's a, he comes from, he's not a colonial, he's more Native American, and he really does. You know, I'm not puffing them, I don't go for their scandals. Well, you know, I don't, I'm not against them. I'm alive because of them. Word of faith. Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, Flo, I'm alive. I'm not a part of them. Because I was out in the crowd that took their name and run with it and abused people with it in more than one state. I'm not a part of that because of them. Because I'm not famous. You know, that he cannot, these people that are famous do not know, including a lot of people, Jake's, and a lot of people don't know about the Boys Club because they wouldn't be in it. But I can tell you. I can tell you that that is how it has happened because of TV, process, ignorance, shamelessness, cluelessness, society, fads and fancies, trends and winds of doctrine, occult and cult spirit, but also money. So I don't call out, I'm not calling out any famous name, not at all. Not Bill Hammond. I, I don't know him. I saw him once from afar. Looked okay to me. I don't know. I don't call him that. I think whatever goes on in the move, you watch for. I don't say Kenneth Copeland does that or anybody. That, you know, Eagle Mountain, they're healthy, in my opinion. I don't know them all, but I was out with the people who said we are under them, and that's the part around America, you know, certain ones. They can go and clean up their, you know, make sure their people are healthy. Er. Then Assembly of God. Listen, there are nothing. There's nobody more gentlemanly and ladylike than the Assembly of God at times, and they're not haughty, to my opinion. But then you can have the element within, and you can have the element within a Baptist and the, any kind of person. But I'm saying that the LP is giant, and the LP needs to be removed. 
and the LP needs to respect all people, not just white people or one kind only. And I have seen it on TikTok. Only reason I know how big it is, it's not just Christian. It's usually a white religion. Maybe in Utah, that one. A lot of it. I, they're not my business. I don't go there. I don't believe. I'm not sure of their salvation. You know, I'm not called to them. I'm called to really spirit-filled tongue talkers and your all-wise doctrine. Your self-righteous doctrine because you've gotten to be old in the mood. <laughs> Three types of charismatics, in my opinion. Now, anybody of the famous moves I mentioned, feel free to call me up. I'm not mad. I'm not angry at all. I'm concerned for the Lord and your reputation, really. But also your people that are doing it are going to be bringing judgment on you and on themselves. And they're biased because it's not white. It's not right and it's all white. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm saying there are three kinds of charismatics. One, there is the genuine remnant, the holy fear of the Lord remnant. See, the holy fear of the Lord is a big deal in this, a lot of it. The holy fear of the Lord means humility, respect for all kinds of people, and it would help our nation. It's not biased, but it's not haughty, misogynist. It's not about making money, being known. So there are tons of these. I would say that if I go out in the field, which are a lot around here, a lot of them like that, I would say the, I'm not puffing Jack Hayford, he died, but he has been a modicum of modesty, in, in my opinion, all his life, and he died. And to me, if there is a white apostle there is not LP that should be respected, that was quietly a servant leader and did great effect, Jack Hayford. So the ones that are around here that are my buddies, instead of friends, family like friends, they are in the move from that is affected by Jack Hayford, the ones in Dallas. I never was sent. I needed, when I, like a physician, if the physician wasn't needed, I didn't go but once. So I'd visit, like, the one that's related to Jack Hayford. I think it was, Bob, you know. But I didn't feel the lead to go back because the physician, the, the doctor of theology was not needed to study the doctrine. You know, it was healthy. I don't go for everybody's belief. I don't go with their, I'm not puffing anybody. They were white, but they didn't have that, rotten side of the LP. I, didn't, I needed deeper. I needed a different kind, but I still... Re see, I'm body unity. If I were to go, let's say, old memories of people who are not LP that are white and Pentecostal, Brother Shambach, I went out there when he was alive and uh, to his meeting to check it out, and he was Pentecostal, but he was not LP. He was very respectful, very diverse. And see, that's it. It's the lack of love and the lack of fun and the... Now, the reason I don't really go toward a lot of real Pentecostals, even though I like you a lot, I could use some real Pentecost and apostles and all that, is really because the offering bothers me, taking people hostage for money really bothers me. So we're going to teach, if we have prayer people, prayer people and time and energy, I'd like to teach my version of, you know, money, because I believe in not throwing out all of the faith movement but going back and calming it down, toning it down, and making it, under, you know, like, yeah, this is really good when you're in a desperate me. You know, I've lived in that way, so I understand. But we don't want to make it famous. We're not making it about money. We're not making it about um, possessions. In fact, the target is not materialistic. Not, And then it's your conscience. You and God, not my business, what he tells you. That's really it. More later. So the three kinds of charismatics are the Holy Fear of the Lord charismatic. The remnant, ready to go if Jesus comes. The Enoch, silent remnant. Then we have the quasimatic. The quasimatic means you don't know who they really are. They're ambitious, they're demons, and they're like shallow, ignorant, or just maybe signed on to be under somebody famous, or they got know they can get money by putting their shingle out and saying we're a pastor, prophet. You know, and I'm not angry with you, and not all of them. And see, this is it. Everyone's different. So we need to pull the wool off our off our own eyes, you know. We need to really see what in the world is going on now. Who is true, who am not. That's why I'm saying you got to check out, like Paul said, know me, know my lifestyle, know my doctrine. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. you got to do that. You really do. The last kind of charismatic would be the... the um, 
the crazy-matic. So we got the charismatic, that's the remnant. We got the quasi-matic that you never know, playtime and money, you know. Who are they now? They like the title. They like to call everybody, you know, whatever. Then we got the crazy-matic. The crazy-matic is the witch-watcher crowd. They've gotten off Holy Spirit. They're off target. It's about themselves, about their gifts. And now they're looking for flaws because they're still into the... I don't know if they're a remnant of the, the leftover of the deliverance ministry, the dark devil spying religion, the, the witch watcher crowd, using occult divining to read you and never speak, travel in the spirit maybe, target people in prayer to pray against you for showing up because they don't like you and they read you wrong. Failing to discern the body of Christ correctly has two curses on it, everybody. Dying young and being sick and you don't know why. That's Pauline first church about community communion and discerning the body and these are the last days it should be community Ephesians for Paul where we're getting along if see if you're reading somebody if you're impure you're gonna read them with your brilliant skill to save you time energy you know you're gonna read all these people and then you won't even talk to them to know for sure. You're avoiding. You're not submitted to 1 John 1, 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. You're not cleansed. You're not under the blood when you're not doing it right. So you're targeting people you've never met. You're demeaning people and defying them as its types and you're misogynist or racist. You are a false prophet to profit by advertising we are a Christian church come and put your money in our plate but when they come you only want your kind that is not the wisdom that comes from above James 3.17 it is the respect of persons if you got turf protecting you're not in the you're unsubmitted to God's whole counsel because Paul said everybody's in a community I even googled chat AIGBT I said you know back in the day with all this hoop jumping going on LP famous bowing and you know all that stuff did the whole church really use Ephesians 5:21 or just some people you know Ephesians 5:21 Paul says you know everyone walking it out mutual submission in the fear of the Lord and I typed that into chat GBT AI and it said yeah that's how they used it no big shots Paul says in Ephesians 4 another word on that walking it out in meekness and lowliness and long suffering endeavoring to keep the bonds of peace together not TMZ tabloid character assassination I also because of that it really is I also and I'm gonna have to stop this soon my battery's running out All right. I also googled did in the old in the New Testament did the first church call out the names of prophets false prophets in public and did they revile those people that's what I asked chat GBTA I said did the first church name false prophets call them out in public and revile them like they do the chat GBT said objectively they did name false prophets but they did it in the community they kept it within the community so they didn't do it publicly they didn't revile them it said they did not revile them and certainly they would not if they had the chance with monetizing videos they would not do it today to the quote subgroups of famous celebrity preachers and I do not either so we have really we've really had it because this is they've sunk so low these people now are sinking it they've sunk so low that only God could bring this back and it, a lot of it in evangelical but also charismatic also tongue-talking Pentecostal a lot of this hostility toward the Christian in America is about the whelp portrayal in media and in ministry. The whelp government systems. Am I pro them as people, white, black, brown, and purple and green? Yes, I am. But I'm not pro false teaching, corruption, corrupt doctrine that has brought America down and the church is a laughing stock. The church, this is a season of choice. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to follow your turf, making it big? Or are you going to follow the Lord and no matter what happens, you're going to keep on serving Him? I'm following Him. 
as the old song from Billy Graham era when people really had a hunger for the Lord, a fear of the Lord for eternity. They weren't all white. The old song, I've decided, decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. No, though none go with me, no none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Showbiz, religious right, you're on your last legs. You're on your last governing legs for this type of present, you know, mocking, mocking, making it religion and not love. The Father's heart. All right, let me close because my battery's gone. Luke 117 is the day of Elijah in the New Testament. You have the old king's version of, you know, power, signs and wonders and Jezebels and all that stuff for a national move. Hey, yeah, that can happen. But you got to get the right New Testament version, Luke 117, about relationships, respect, bringing healing, reconciliation to all kinds of generations, family, ministry, life generations. You read it. You follow it. God bless you. Bye-bye.